I can't say because the school doesn't allow me to do that. For impact to destination country, positive and、uh, negatives are kind of half half. We say they are kind of equal, with a few positive, a few negative. But for impact of source country, we will say most of the impact would tend to be negative. Economic impact again, first off, because most of the time these are mostly economic voluntary migration. We also cover involuntary as well, but for economic impact, mostly voluntary. For the home country, there are more economic opportunities because they get less competition. So imagine now you have a pizza, let's say eight pizzas, and then sometimes like you have to fight, right? Let's say it's the Christmas party in the school. You have two big pizza, eight pizzas each. So, but your class has more than sixteen people, more than sixteen students. So you have to fight for the pizza. But now imagine there are only ten classmates in the classroom. Then you have sixteen pizza. Then you don't have to fight. Everyone get each. So less competition, lower demand, supply of labor decrease. So that becomes a problem. We could have labor shortage. So now it is kind of a different dynamic. So. For the employer, it is problematic because they get less worker to choose from. But for the workers, it is a good problem because they get more employers to choose from, right? So now the dynamic is shifting from the employer to the employee. Okay. So right now the U.S. labor market is kind of like that. Doesn't matter whether it is the service worker or the knowledge worker. The If we look at the underlying number, the statistics in the U.S. labor market, we'll see that there are more jobs openings than the worker available. It means that there are more jobs available for workers than the workers. So kind of like, imagine I have ten jobs opening, but only five workers. So before COVID, is the opposite. Like we get more people fighting for the jobs. So the power is in the employer. Because they get to choose, right? It's just like the school; they get so many students fighting to get in to the like Benwin school. But now imagine there are so many Benwin school, but not that many students. So the students now have the power to choose which school to go, right? So it also have implication for that. So from the economic perspective, it means that employer they have to increase the wage. Maybe provide better welfare to attract the worker, because now we say that it's not only the great resignation, it's the great rethinking, right? People say so. It means that workers or employees are now considering more than pay, more than the income. So it doesn't matter if you give me a higher income, I'm not staying. If you force me to go back to the office, return to normal, right? Because So many employees have get used to the work from home dynamic, just like school, right? Online school, remote school, where you have lesson at home. You find it so comfortable, so free, that you are now less willing to go back to school, or maybe not all students are willing to do that. So some of them prefer, oh, I just want to stay at home, have online Zoom lesson, don't want to go back to school. Some prefer go back for sure. And then, so there's a different dynamic. So in the labor market, it's the same. Certain employees are now so used to work from home, no commuting basically. So they prefer this way of working. And if their employer are saying, okay, Francis, we now have to ask all employees to go back to the office, no more work from home. And I'm just say, nope, I'm not continue working. I quit. Okay, I said I quit. So then, I go look for other employers who provide an offer work from home as the condition of employment. Then I say, okay, even an other employer is offering me a lower income. Well, I think well, I save a lot of money from、uh, commuting, save a lot of money from、uh, buying clothing or whatever dining out in the in the office area. So I say, oh, I just choose this new employer, even though the income is lower. Okay. So now a lot of employees, especially 
a younger generation are now considering more than just income in terms of employment offer, in terms of employment condition. Like, what, what do you think about school? Like, do you prefer full back to school or you prefer online school or a hybrid? It's about the hybrid. In the labor market, again, for those knowledge workers who are able to work from home, they also understand the positive and negatives of work from home and in the office. So a hybrid mode is a better way to them. So maybe not all work from home and also not all in the office, but kind of a hybrid. And the key from their perspective is that they get to choose when they go to office and when they work from home. And the employer, they have to articulate, explain why certain days when they are asked to go to office, what is the purpose of that? They have to, the employers have to explain to the employees why, what's the point of going back to office when the things can be done at home. Yeah. So there are also certain parts, I think similar to students, like employees, they miss the social interaction, interpersonal connection with colleagues, with co-workers, just like students are missing the interaction, play with fellow classmates, right? Your friends. So even though you can stay connected through Discord, whatever, like messaging apps during the online lesson era, online lesson time, what would you say? Do you think it's enough for just messaging apps rather than meeting face to face with your friends. The, the future for the workplace would be hybrid. What about school? I'm not sure. Right? From the student perspective, do you think uh, like out of the three choices, which one do you prefer the most? The first one is back to normal, back to old before COVID, a uh, full day of school. Second choice is kind of like COVID times, all remote, virtual at home study. And the third one with hybrid, let's say uh, whatever the mix. So maybe a few days at school, a few days at home. Which one would you prefer? The third one, okay, yeah. If I were you, I would also prefer that. But I'm not sure whether the school would do that. Do you think the school are going to do it? Like, yeah, at least your school, no? They're going to be, number one, full day of school. More teaching time for what? Teacher want more teaching time for the exam because they think that if they can't cover all the syllabus, the students are not ready right, or prepared. Is it the case really? You, you really need the teacher to teach you all the content. Or you think, yeah, no. How, how many students actually listen to the teacher? I wonder, like from your embarrassed laugh, I know the answer already. So, okay, let, let's do it this way. Let's say now you have to choose a school. So I give you the above three choices, free school, assuming all factors are the same all the teachers, content, location, whatever, are the same. The first school is all full face-to-face -face teaching. The second one is all virtual, and the third one is hybrid. Which one would you choose? Hybrid one, the actual school. If you can choose again, you'll choose the hybrid one. Yeah. But sadly, you, you can't choose again. <laughs> You've already chosen it. Anyway, and, and I don't think that many school, or if at all any, is offering the hybrid from now on. They are probably just going to be full blown in a face-to-face -face in-person teaching again. It, it, again, it's an interesting dynamic in the school, right? When the other businesses and industry are embracing this hybrid workplace, hybrid mode, school is going back to full normal, <laughs> right? Like, and I wonder from the perspective of teachers, whether they will be like other employees thinking the same, whether they would prefer hybrid or prefer like full blown in person again or full virtual. I haven't talked to that many teachers and asked them the, this question, but yeah, I wonder. Maybe next Tuesday you can ask your school teacher, teacher, you prefer uh, like in person, hybrid or, or, or online? <laughs> See what your teacher will say. Maybe they'll say, I actually prefer hybrid as well, but then I can't, I can't say because the school doesn't allow me to do that. Yeah, that is a, that's a, that's a pretty sad thing, right? Imagine all the students 
and the teacher also preferred that. But the school just said, no, we're going all in person again. That won't be a happy school. It's a miserable school. I wonder how many schools are actually rethinking and considering to update, that like keep up to date with, with the social change. Uh, government tax revenue will decrease, just like we mentioned, when we have more migrants, more income tax for the from the government, from people working, more business corporate tax from business making money. So now when people are leaving, less people are consuming. So it means that business are making less money. Well, as a result, the government revenue from tax will decrease. You know, so key is the government revenue, it's not government income. So it's different, right? Income is usually for personal, for individual. Revenue would be for organization, for government, for businesses. We use this word revenue, okay? So be careful with that. Uh, remittance will increase, so this is positive because people working overseas will send money back, back to the home country. So that becomes a remittance. Net income flow should be a negative because imagine if I make $10,000 a month in Hong Kong and I make $10,000 working overseas. I have to spend part of my income for food, for transport, whatever necessary living overseas. So the amount of remittance would not be 10,000 back to Hong Kong, right? So maybe only 5,000. So that 5,000 becomes a remittance. But if I work in Hong Kong and spend in Hong Kong, then if I spend all 10,000, all the money stay in Hong Kong, assuming I don't import other things or spend overseas buying stuff. Demographic impact. So we say that mm, if we have a mass exodus, exodus means people leaving, large group of people leaving, then it's usually affecting the gender balance. We just talk about construction worker, usually young men, then females will be left behind. So affect the gender ratio, mean, meaning more females are in the country, the original country. So some exception, maybe the Philippines, Indonesian, Thailand, where we have domestic helper exported overseas. So that could be a bit different. But then at the end of the day, the number of domestic worker working overseas are just a very small number in the whole country population. So it would not make such a big difference. And even age ratio, just talk about it. Usually younger people will migrate. Doesn't matter men or uh, women, but usually men. So it becomes more old people or very young people, very young, maybe before 20 years old, will be left in the country. So they are less productive or they're not even productive at all because they're not working. That's why we call it dependent. Dependent means they're not making money themselves. They have to depend on the economically active population.